You take care, old warrior, and save a spot in Valhalla for me, if I should prove so worthy to join you. Thank you. Thank you. Valhalla? That's Norse. We're in church, for Christ's sake. That's on me. I should have vetted this eulogy. <laughs> so kind would you mind introducing yourselves for the podcast starting with the driver's seat i'm julian guitar uh my name's david i'm vocalist james drums and the band that you guys play for is uh vagafrost 
And so you guys headlined the first night of a Symbiotic Metal Fest here in Wellington. And right now we are in a parked car in the parking lot behind Valhalla. Who's, whose car is this, by the way? Uh, <laughs> unknown person. <laughs> well, in a friend of mine, I, I borrowed his car for the weekend. <laughs> Nice. Uh, so, thank you, friend, for giving us a, a quiet spot to uh, to talk. Let's start with where we are right now. Uh, have you guys played uh, Symbiotic before? Uh, yes, we played the last Symbiotic. Every every time, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think every time. We've so this played is it, the yeah. third. Yeah. Third, yeah, third. This is the third time that Symbiotic has happened. Um, the last few years, it's been just two nights. Sort of a. It's always been the Friday black metal night, the Saturday death metal night. This time it's three nights, so we got Friday black metal, Saturday death metal, Sunday sort of prog tech deathcore type stuff, sure, yeah. sort of a the odd you know odd ones out. Generally we only play a, sort of two or three shows a year because historically um, we were all across different cities, so it's you know logistically a bit tricky. Um, I used to live here in Wellington until April this year. And the rest of the guys were in Nelson. And then I moved back in April. So this this three-day fest, which started quite recently, it brings mostly bands from around New Zealand, and uh, there were supposed to be a few bands from Australia playing. It is largely a showcase of New Zealand metal. Is is that a fair thing to say? Yeah, that's right. Um, unfortunately, yeah, there was, as you say, there was meant to be a couple of Australian bands, but um, they actually pulled out, both of them. They were meant to be playing tonight. Um, but we... We don't know why they pulled out. So, uh, so it's still just New Zealand bands this time. But yeah, pretty much every single New Zealand metal band that's gigging is playing this weekend. So it's really a uh, sort of showcase of the New Zealand scene. You know, everyone that's anyone is here. And it is, from from what I understand, it's a rare opportunity for bands of similar genres to play with each other because there isn't necessarily a black metal scene in different cities but across New Zealand there are uh, quite a few. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, the beauty of this is rather than just trying to limit it to one city, it's kind of just every band can just come together and play And because, I mean, New Zealand's a small country so we know, you know, everyone from, you know, Wellington, Nelson, Christchurch and even, you know, a lot of people from Auckland too so it's good to just or come together, catch up, and you know, play a gig together, which is which is nice. Yeah, it's really like a it's a big family here because such as as Jill said, it's such a small country, so everyone knows everyone else, and uh, it's yeah, it's a really good vibe at these shows because, as I say, like everyone sort of knows everyone else, and we've all played together. Before. Yeah. Let's talk about Varga Frost. How long have you guys been around, and what brought you guys together? Would have been like about August two thousand and eleven that we were formed um, basically what brought us around was sort of like a, a mutual interest in music and also you know playing music and wanting to form a band and sort of start progressing into into gigging and writing music and sort of sort of stuff like that um, our music sort of revolves a lot around sort of like heathenism and odinism and stuff like that a lot more um, than other black metal bands so to speak so I feel like music's quite u- unique as well like we don't follow like the usual sort of black metal trend sort of thing we sort of have our own sort of style of music um, so yeah, but I'll, I'll let the other guys speak a little bit more and <laughs> have their words. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I suppose we were back in high school. Uh, Dave, Dave um, came up with a sort of an idea and a concept, and then um, got me on board to do guitar. So he could, he originally did bass. So um, he sort of had some lyrics, and that and I came along with some riffs. So about two, early 2012, really started to put put it together. And then we started just kind of bedroom jamming as you do, and then um, and Levi, who's currently on bass, was start, the uh, original session drummer. drummer for the demo. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of really, really kind of just patchy start in terms of we're just playing around, nothing too serious, 
and um, kind of trying to trying to do something, but at the same time, it's quite can be quite hard to start a band when you're all pretty new. Because both Dave and I were new to um, being in bands. It was really our first attempt at trying to do something. And then um, once James joined in um, 2014, he um, he had experience with a previous band and had done gigs and. Um, took the material we had so far, and we made our, our first album. It was pretty, pretty raw, but it was a good, a good start, and it was a good kind of learning curve. So we, uh, yeah, our first album we, um, which is basically a demo, but um, yeah, we got some good songs that we still play um, a few songs off it um, today, and yeah, put that together and kind of played our first gig and started to um, form sort of an idea of what we wanted to do and get it tighter as a band and then um, in 2015 yeah Levi, Levi joined as bass so Dave could just focus on vocals and by then we had new material so we wrote that um, On A Blood, Spirit and Love album which you heard some songs from tonight and we had some CDs there yeah, that was kind of moving forward even more so into trying to do material that we could play live and um, play quite tight. You know, we're all pretty um, bit more confident by then, playing live and doing stuff. And then since then we've been writing, you know, new stuff and trying to work on some new stuff. But yeah, um, 2016 and 2017 we did a lot of a lot of gigs actually. We'd um, in Wellington, Christchurch, few in Nelson, and um, yeah, we got tighter as a band doing that, and I think the more gigs you play, the the tighter you get, and the more confident you get. And so, yeah, we found that that really uh, useful when we got the opportunity to play with um, some bigger bands. All the local band was just really good, you know. Got to know all the local guys, but then we've opened for um, Thirteen Forty Nine, Gore Guts, and um, Marduk, which has all been pretty pretty um, big experiences for us, and it was. It's nice to be considered for things like that, and especially as a sort of an upcoming band. So yeah, right say anything, James? <laughs>
Yeah, well, what ties the two albums together, Boys of the Dawn and On a Blood Spirit Love, they're both live recordings. So we're very much um, about maintaining the Purity. sort of the, the raw live energy. Because a lot of bands these days, especially in the black metal scene, um, it's all about being hyper polished and, you know, simps and keyboards and blah, blah, blah. But not that we're against that, but we're sort of carving out a niche as a yeah. keeping that raw live energy which is sort of why we stand out. And yeah, that sort of folk, folk metal influence a little bit. Uh, no Triggers, um, yeah, Honor Blood Spirit Love is, we were just recorded in a room, live, you know, totally yeah. natural, fluid, um, no click tracks, no click triggers, not that, you know, again, not that we're against that stuff, you know, but um, it's just not the, that's the direction we wanted to take. Did you guys record all together and then overdub the vocals? Uh, actually, like the f- the first album, I think uh, we recorded everything, <laughs> and then I think I overdubbed the vocals. And yeah, were you on the second album? We recorded it all in one room, everyone there, like one just press record, and yeah. we all jammed. So Basically, the first one, just um, a jam, you know what I mean? Dave did do live vocals on the first album, but. He wasn't happy with them, yeah. So, so he over of. did overdub them, but um, on a blood spirit love, uh, it was all live. So even the vocals were live, which is yeah, you know, pretty unorthodox. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was sort of like half out of necessity and half big room and all standing at one end of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we it. yeah, sort of half of it was that we wanted that sort of sort of sort of sound, mm. but um, the other half of it was that we were just restrained by sort of time and equipment. Um, our good friend Shaman Fair, he uh, recorded that one, and he only had so many mics, and we just sort of decided that we'd try and capture it all live and mm. see if it worked, and it turned out that it did work, and you were quite happy with it. Yeah, I was pretty you know, happy with it, because for, for me, you know, like the, the core element of it is, is, is sort of like the the purity of it and the atmosphere of it and then the uniqueness about it because there's you know like we're quite a unique band in, in, in respect you know like we all have our different influences and stuff like that but we all sort of like similar music and we all had had this sort of this idea and we just sort of put it together and we just sort of made it into something you know and then but, you know, we, you know, we've been around for like seven years now. You know, so it's it's pretty cool. You know, we've done some pretty pretty awesome gigs and played some awesome shows, and you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool thing, and it's a pretty cool thing to be proud of. You know, to, to be up on a stage, and, and you know, to to because for me and my vocals, you know, I'm, I'm speaking a lot about like cultural things to like ancient things you know like I'm, I'm trying to keep things alive that are just in modern times are just lost and forgotten you know like the ways of, of m- my ancestors and, and the, my indigenous culture and stuff like that you know I'm trying to keep those roots alive you know, within my music as well but you know yeah you know I just I, I love it you know I love playing music and, and the creative side of it you know it's such a beautiful thing you know like, wh- whatever music you play you know it's, it's, it's that creativeness you know and yeah like we, we played a, a song tonight called Falcon Heart which is which is a big thing for me you know it's a, a really symbolic song it has like a lot of meaning like um, but it also has relevance to like the native falcon of this land the Karaya you know like in my lyrics, I talk about you know, like the I mean, lines of the song, uh, "Sacred Child of This Land, Born of Wind and Lightning." You know, and, it, and the chorus line is, you know, "Falcon Heart, Raise My Spirit Free." You know, it's it's like my my lyrics and that revolve a lot around sort of like hedonism and purity, seeking to you know become a sort of taking what is forgotten and, and using it and holding it in your heart and moving forward with it, you know what I mean? Sort of like letting it empower you, like I'm not standing on stage singing about this or that or whatever, I'm singing about things that are like 
who I am. I'm expressing myself. I'm expressing things that mean a lot to me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm expressing things that are forgotten that I don't want to see forgotten. You know what I mean? You know, like you know, a tree with roots grown deep will survive, but you know, a tree with roots cut short, you know, will wither and die. You know. And that's my sort of my view on it, you know. <laughs> I'm not really a great person to do an interview, <coughs> but <laughs> I'll give it my go, you know. So yeah, but it's been it's been a long road, you know. Like we've done a lot of stuff, you know, and it's you know, something that I'm proud of, you know. So. Maybe we can talk about your background a little bit because I think it's. Um, I wasn't expecting a a band from New Zealand to sing about like Odinist and uh, Viking themes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, like, for me growing up as, as, as a kid, you know, I like grew up in the, out of multiple sounds, you know, I sort of grew up in this sort of, like, I didn't, I didn't really know what a traffic light was until I was 10 years old, you know what I mean, I grew up in that sort of, that out of, you know, rural lifestyle, you know, and I grew up around nature and all that sort of stuff, you know, and, and a sense of just, like, wanting to like, express that, but also, like, to let people know how I felt, you know, and, and to, to, you know, because I see a lot of, of misunderstanding in this world and a lot of, you know, a lot of shit and I just, you know, want to give, a, you know, I want to have, like, my music to be, like, pure and from the heart and to, you know, even though some people may not stand there and understand my vocals, you know, for me it's this, the point of it is that I'm standing there and I'm saying what I want to say, you know. And that means a lot to me. I think the thing is, um, one thing with New Zealand, I mean, we have the um, sort of a more indigenous Maori culture, but a lot of us are from, you know, James, a drummer, he's he's originally from the UK, and all my family are from Europe and Dave and that, mm. even Levi. So it's kind of, you know, even though um, we settled, you know, a um, few generations back we settled in New Zealand, it's kind of, we all come from from Europe and we all can, you know, trace ourselves back to um, Europe, it's just, I suppose, you know, like America or like um, the Dutch in South Africa or um, Australia and that, it's just um, migration, but um, yeah, so we've all, we've all got an, a big interest in history and especially um, early history and almost pre-Christian history, I suppose, because there's a cer certain romantic aspect to it. It's a, there's a, um, a certain magic to it, I guess, and I think the fact that we can, you know, trace ourselves back there and we can, you know, I've, um, James been to Europe, I've, I've been to Europe a few times and gone back to, you know, ancient sites and that, and to think, you know, your, your family once grew up around here, and it's, it is quite humbling, and I think it is important to remember... Um, you know, this is this day and age we live in. You know, a modern society in New Zealand and that. But at the same time, generations ago, you know, our ancestors lived. You know, lived quite humble lives, or you know, all sorts of lives. Um, you know, back in Europe, and it's it's just paying an ode to that, and also yeah, just um, playing on history of what we know and what we kind of um, was studied, and then I think the the thing with like pagan cultures, you know, with the um, Germanic, Nordic, and sort of Celtic, Pictish cultures that we can all trace ourselves back to. There's something quite um, magical, quite spiritual in the idea that you know people live it like this, and it's you know it starts off in an early age reading books or you know you see movies and things, and I I think as you get older you start to read a bit more into it, and um, it's a lot more widely accepted. I think these days, it's especially in the metal scene, it's quite. Um, open now, you know, a lot of bands incorporate that, and I think a lot of people take interest into it through music, which is cool, because then, you know, they go from music to then, you know, reading a bit more about it too, so it's kind of works hand in hand, so I, th I think that's good, and I think we definitely um, took to that, and New Zealand being a beautiful country, it's, you know, having a connection to nature is really important for all of us, you know, getting outdoors, getting out in the mountains and hills and forests and rivers, and I think the beauty is that's what our ancestors loved to do back, you know. So I think there's that connection, a spiritual connection to nature, which is important for us too. So we try and um, represent that in the music and, uh, yeah, represent 
and all all forms our interest in history and nature and what That's makes, the, uh, makes us us. For on a blood was um, painting of the Southern Alps by a Gully or something. Uh, John, John Gully. John Gully. Yeah. yeah so um, yeah. that's because obviously it's, it's kind of a cliche. You know, we'll admit that it's a cliche that nowadays for black metal albums to be, you know, the album art to be some, you know, beautiful scenic nature shot. <laughs> I have a, a photograph or a painting, but um. I guess our, but, you know, our point of difference is that, uh, yeah, it's this country and um, we've got our unique take on things in that we are inspired directly by the sort of primeval beauty of New Zealand, which is, mm. you know, what we're sort of renowned for. And, you know, it's quite similar in some ways to Scandinavia. Mm. And it sort of um, sparks that same sort of awe you know, when you when you're in those environments, um, it's just such a humbling thing to see. You know, the mountains and the fjords and the snow-capped, you know, peaks, and uh, that's yeah, that's part of our inspiration here.
I want to talk about the town that you're from, because I don't know much about New Zealand. This is my second trip. I was in Auckland uh, back in April. Auckland doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is only my second day in Wellington, and I'm getting a sense of the music scene and the people, and it, it, there's still a lot I don't know about this country. So tell me about Nelson, and tell me about the South Island. Nelson is very... Um, even more laid back than I would say the North Island. Nelson is, um, yeah, the South Island is a lot more rural, I suppose, in terms of um, our towns are a a lot smaller and everything's a bit more laid back. So Nelson, yeah, Nelson is a um, really sunny little town, you know, good for swimming and outdoors sort of biking and hiking and that. And it's, um, you know, lots of nice craft beer and lots of cafes and things like that so it's quite a artsy little sleepy little town and yeah and I suppose coming from there we've got access to a lot of nature and um, getting outdoors so that's that's always good and uh, we'll we'll basically grow up there so we know the place well but yeah I would say that it's not really New Zealand being small Nelson doesn't have a really a mental scene it's more we would travel to Wellington Christchurch or Auckland to play gigs because it's not really large enough to have its own scene it's more just you know the beauty of um, you know the internet and everything you you know it's easy enough to set up to go up there or down there and play some gigs because yeah especially New Zealand being so small as as I've said um, it's just a nice easy way to connect with everyone else around the country who are sort of playing in band and doing a similar thing and just yeah meeting people um getting gigs that we um like such as the international acts that we've been had the opportunity to do so it's it's been good we've kind of yeah um broadened our horizons with everything the more we play so yeah yeah there's the fact that we're so small um it's a double-edged sword because on the one hand we get so few international bands coming through although in recent years that has increased a lot um, we're very lucky but then the flip side of that is that because we're such a small country bands like us who are from a small town and you know not especially famous or anything um, we get the opportunity to open for bands like Marduk and Gorguts whereas obviously like in your native states or Malaysia um, only the sort of you know pretty major league bands would get that opportunity but um, here we yeah people like us get to do that so um, so we're very lucky in that sense just in terms of Nelson I mean is there a, a venue that you guys can play regularly are there other bands no, that you guys... that's the thing about Nelson what, like I, I know a lot of people who are in the area who are interested in metal and, and who play instruments and stuff like that but the one thing about Nelson is there's not really anywhere for people to go who are interested in, in metal and, and that sort of type of music to go and congregate all together or to get to know one another or to play gigs you know there's there just isn't really that scene yeah we have played one gig in nelson with um and a couple of bands it was smaller but it's kind of it wouldn't it's not a regular thing it's kind of a once you do it once or twice and that's kind of it like it's there's a venue there that we can use but they do all sorts of stuff and it's you know it's a mixture of people and it's um it's fun at the time but uh, you wouldn't you know you wouldn't make a regular metal um scene out of it you know lots lots of gigs with lots of bands it's just the you know the odd band and nelson might play once once a year or something and that that's kind of almost the quota for the year but whereas you know wellington auckland and christchurch it's most weekends there's gigs on and even during the week so it's a lot more opportunity to do gigs and that around the rest of the country yeah i mean to put it into perspective um Nelson's population is only 50,000, so it's, you know, it's like a tiny village in the US, for example. So it's kind of not that surprising that we don't have much of a scene. But then that's, yeah, because because New Zealand's so small, we have a much more of a national scene. It's much more close-knit, mm-hmm. whereas obviously in the States or whatever, you'd have, you know, regional scenes and towns and cities. But here we definitely have a, a national scene, you know. For example, this weekend, um, everyone... Everyone knows each other, and everyone, uh, you know, we all get along, and there's no, you know, inter-scene rivalry or what have you. It's all very harmonious. 
Mm. And, uh, you know, the South Island, um, only, I think, was it a quarter of the whole country live in the South Island, even though it's got the greater landmass. So it's a very, very, you know, sparsely populated place, but very, um, beautiful. I'm not sure how to, how to phrase this question. Given the limitations of Nelson, did you guys ever consider moving out? Oh, uh, no, nah, because sort of like the, the purity and essence of the music is, it, it come, sort of comes from like the, being around nature and being around that, you know, like I would never move away from and live in a city or anything like that because it's not who I am. You know, if I did that, I'd become someone who I'm, who I'm, who I'm not, who I don't want to be. You know, like for me, I get my inspiration as well for writing music from going out in the mountains and going out into the national parks and sort of, you know, gaining that experience as well. You know, and being out there and just breathing the fresh air and looking around and you know seeing nature at its be beauty and its beauty and its purity. You know, so that that inspires me. So like being being in the city, I. I just couldn't do it, you know, this is not who I am, you know, um, so that's my take on that anyway, so. Yeah, um, pretty much what Dave said, uh, I, personally, I lived here in Wellington for about six years. And Levi lived, our bassist lived in Wellington as well. Um, so, so, I'm from, the, well, <laughs> long, long story is, um, my family moved here from England uh, in 2006, so pretty much growing up here for most of my life um, then I moved to here to Wellington to study um, lived here for six years and but then in April this year 2018 I moved back because I sort of always missed Nelson and missed the yeah as Dave said you know the natural beauty of it all so I moved back um, but yeah again the beauty of this country is that uh, we still get you know invited to play these gigs in Auckland and Wellington and you know the major centres it's not really it's not really an impediment to live being based in Nelson but, you know, for many years yeah. I was here and the rest of the guys were in Nelson and we still managed to make it work and gig um, and a lot of bands are in a similar situation they, they live in quite small places but they still um, travel to the major centres for these sort of festival type shows um, and that's the good thing about, about New Zealand, you know, it, it is a small country, you know, and, and that's the thing, like, to go to go to a gig in Christchurch, it's not, it's not that far, you know, or to go to a gig in Wellington, it's not that far, you know, sort of thing, and, you know, when we come to, you know, like, we, we've done gigs in Nelson, but it's sort of like, we we just sort of, like, have to invite whatever band, whoever, you know, just come along and play, you know, whereas here, you know, they've got, like, you know, an event set up, you know, and it's, it's you know, and, and everyone knows about it and, and a lot more people come and, and tend to enjoy it, you know, but so like, you know, we, we played a Satan Fest down in uh, Christchurch, I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's a pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty cool show, mate. <laughs> next weekend? Yeah, next weekend, you know, in Christchurch, three days of it, so, you know, that, that, that's a really awesome thing, you know, and it's, um, you know, so yeah, but being at Nelson's not, not a bad thing for me, you know, like I, I enjoy the nature side of it as well for inspiration for writing music, you know, but, you know, it's not a far drive to Christchurch where they have Satan Fest or, you know, and they have various other gigs and stuff like that going on, so and it's also good to play with other, other bands from different areas and, and different genres as well, you know, sort of thing to keep that dynamic difference, you know.
up what's what's next for you guys oh uh, well, we, we're sort of um i mean tonight we played a few songs off our um third album our upcoming third album which we're um sort of yet to record but we're sort of in the process of just sort of getting on to it and, and sort of getting things moving you know so um you know we're getting there you know but um that, that's our sort of our next move is just to sort of like more hunker down on that and sort of get get things moving on that um and sort of you know, get everything sort of tight and, and sort of refined stuff a little bit and um, then we're going to re record it and then um, we'll probably release it and do some and do some more gigs or in New Zealand like that. Um, we, are, we are assigned to a, a German label called Nature Muck Productions. Um, so yeah, so they, they sort of uh, handle our sort of distribution sort of a, around Europe and, and stuff like that and um, whatnot. So that that's a pretty 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 cool opportunity to be sort of like it's for a, a record label all the way over in Germany to sort of recognise us and sort of you know take the take the time to actually go like and give us an opportunity to sort of you know to progress forward as a band. Yeah, sort of. So our, our next sort of where we're going from here is basically we're just going to work on our third album. Um, which is quite a bit, in my eyes, quite a bit more atmospheric and and whatnot, you know. And, and when when the band started, you know, we we, we put out our, our first album on uh, Warriors of the Dawn, you know, and then we put out our second album on the Blood, Spirit and Love, you know. And, and and it's like a progression as we're progressing as musicians. We're sort of getting better and better and and getting and getting closer to that sort of that ideal of of of, of how we we want to sound and, and and we're just getting better as musicians so sort of it's it's sort of like just you know doing what we love to do and and, and sort of just moving forward and uh, yeah i can't wait for the third album and to you know record it and <laughs> see yes. what it sounds so that, that's that's what we, we're going to be moving forward towards is the third album and um whatnot and get it to a record label and it's definitely yeah. going to be a more mature sound yeah yeah um mature yeah in what sense uh like like refined more refined because we're, we're getting better as yeah. musicians and and me as well getting better at, at writing lyrics and, and and stuff like that but you don't need mature as in slower or you don't need mature uh, as in uh, a lot of parts right atmospheric kind of. but, it, i mean yeah, that's yeah. part of it yeah it is it's probably mimic, but it's also quite like is it's hard to explain because it is quite a it's quite unique, you know. Like we're we're not like a we don't sort of like follow a trend of other bands. We sort of make our own. I'd know, say um, mature in the sense that it's more more emotionally yeah. grounded. Yeah. Um, yeah. De definitely. Definitely. A bit more. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the album will show you. What's yeah. the space? Yeah. Nature yeah. Mike Productions 2019. Nice. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And in terms of gigs, you guys are playing uh, another fest next weekend? <laughs> Um, no, 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 we, we won't. We won't <laughs> be playing that. that but oh, we um, normally would be. Yeah, but, we, we um, normally would be. But Jules two, has yeah, just yeah. his uh, partner's just had a baby. Oh, yeah. He's now a father. Congratulations yeah, yeah, yeah. to Jules. So he uh, couldn't really commit to it. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Um, so, so at the moment we don't actually have anything in the, in the immediate future. It's but it's what open. Just just apart from just. But sort now of that we all uh, time we yeah we on the third album really. we're all back in Nelson now yeah. so it's uh, unlike previously we we can jam on a weekly basis and uh, be a lot more productive. Hmm. Right on. Yeah, and sort of just you know grab everyone and run down to the band sheet and just <laughs> you know jam out mm -hmm. and. You know, which is which is something that we we haven't really been able to do. You know, since, since we started the band. You know, apart from in the really early early days. Um, so sort of when when we started out, we were um, we because you know James lived away. You know, we we couldn't really just 
be as a band in a hole and jam, we sort of have to like travel and stuff like that, so there was that side of it too, so we, we weren't as, as tight as a band or as close as a band, you know, and we're, we're progressing forward and, and, you know, every album we're taking a step forward, you know, and, and musical ability, musical understanding um, and everything like that. Yeah, but my closing thoughts are really is just that, you know, like, wait for the upcoming album, you know, it's going to say it all. Watch the space, new stuff to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, know. pretty much, you know, and it's going to be good, you know, and, and it's going to be a, a step forward as well, you know, from, from you know, because you always got to keep moving forward, you know. It's, it's the way it, the way it is. Yeah. So, I mean, my closing thoughts are you guys fucking killed it tonight. And thank you so much yeah. for taking the time. I know you guys are tired. And it's been a long day, but thanks for taking the time to sit down and talk with me. Oh, thank, thank you, you for taking the time to talk to us and coming yeah. all this way, man. It's a pleasure. Cheers. Thank you guys.